I'll do something a little bit different today. I thought I'd do some standing up exercises. Just because I know a couple of you haven't got much space to lie down and it can be a bit of a faff going and getting your mat and it's just that bit that puts you off. Or if you just fancy something a bit different, you do a bit of standing up work. So it's half an hour of standing up exercises that I'm going to do now. All mobilising the body just the same as the lying down. So you can incorporate it a bit extra when you stood at the sink doing the washing up or nosy on the neighbours, just a bit extra to do. You have a chair if you want, I'll use it throughout the class. You don't have to have it if your, mobility, if your stability is okay and you don't feel that you need it, but it can help on some of the exercises anyway. And you can use the chair, you can use the draining board, you can use the wall, anything you've got, just to give you that bit of extra support. So get your feet about shoulder distance apart, shoulders back and down. I'm gonna turn side on so that you can see what my head's doing. The shoulders back and down. Head, reach your head for the ceiling and drop your tailbone down as if there's a weight hanging, pulling downwards through that lower spine and pull your belly in a little bit. Spread your toes out, so wriggle your toes around a little bit and just spread them out. Arms are roughly by your sides. If you find that you've got your arms around the front or around the back, then you're overworking the upper body a little bit. So just try and bring them down by your sides. Okay, I'm going to start with the neck. So I'm just going to nod the head to start with, nice and simple. You're going to pull your chin in and lift your chin up. Now, remember, you've got quite a lot. We've got 14 pounds of weight in this head. So when you look up, try and think about lifting up through your chin rather than just throwing your head back. It can make you feel a bit sick. So you pull your chin into your throat and lift your chin up to the ceiling. So just work in the front and back of the neck. There might be some creaking going on, but as long as it's just creaking and not pain, then we're all right. If it is painful, bring the work down beyond the force any, any moves. One more, and then we're gonna look side to side. So bring your head back to center, and imagine putting your chin on the shelf, shoulders back and down slightly, and then turn your head to the side, and the other side. So you're trying to turn your head and keeping your eye line the same. Again, you might hear a bit of creaking, but if you realise how close your ears and your neck is, it's no wonder you hear the joints creaking. Your big toes will creak, but you slow near them because they're further away. Keeping the chest slightly lifted, but reaching up through your head, moving the toes around. If you start to feel your feet trying to claw. And then up and down again, so pull your chin in and lift your chin up. These might work for somebody if you've got somebody in the house who wants to do a bit of exercise but kind of doesn't really fancy getting down on the floor. You can do these exercises standing up or sitting down. Bring your head back to centre and turn to the side again. So we're just mobilising through the neck, we get a lot of tension in the neck and it works its way through the body so get rid of the tension in the neck then the rest of your spine might feel a bit more comfortable too. And then my personal favourite, bring your head back to centre, I'm going to do this side one because it's really unflattering. So put your chin on your shelf, push your head forward and then wind your neck in. So you're trying to pull your chin to your throat. Tuck your chin in a lot slightly and stretch the neck. It makes me sound funny as well. And back out again. So you're trying to pull in and tuck your chin up out of the way. Slide your shoulders down your back. We're looking for a stretch down the back of the neck and across the shoulders here. So easing forward just kind of releases the stretch and then you pull in and up slightly. And you basically want your chin to disappear. Trying to line your ears up with your shoulders, so your shoulders are back and down, and you're winding your neck in. Be careful, people might be getting a bit tetchy at home now, so if you start telling somebody to wind the neck in, <laughs> so pushing forward and pulling in, it's flattering, isn't it? <laughs> One more. And then relax. And just a slight one to finish, just bit more on this one, it can feel a little bit uncomfortable, so shoulders back and down. And you're just tilting your head just as if you've got water in your ear. And you're just tipping it out. 
and then up and over just for that nice little stretch down the neck and across the front of the shoulder try to stop letting try to not let the opposite shoulder come with you because there's no stretch there so ease the opposite shoulder down as you tilt your head away check the posture sometimes we start to drop forward when we're focusing on one part of the body so we're always pulling the shoulders back and down and tilting the tailbone down abdominals pulled in so even though you're stood here just working your neck your core muscles are getting the work as well your legs are getting a little bit of work so it's good for the bone density in the legs and it's good for just reminding you of your ideal posture when you're standing up okay then we're going to move on to the shoulders so just fidget your feet around a little bit your legs can feel a bit heavy when you're standing up that's gravity so we're going to start on the shoulders so we're going to start with the right one and just going to circle it around a few times holding onto the chair if you need to i'll do it side on so you can see what your shoulders do and this one is this is my suggestive shoulder move so be careful of this one if you're doing this in the kitchen and the neighbors can see you just be careful of the message you're sending out and might think you've been on your own a bit too long just pull round and I like to feel the shoulder blade moving across your back moving it round and then move it the other direction pulling it forward so I'm trying to pull the shoulder forward yep. just pulling it forward and then same on the other side I'm going to turn the other way so you can see the shoulder moving pull it back to start with And then bring it forward. It's a good one to wake up the muscles around the shoulder. They tend to get a little bit, a little bit lazy, not working very much. So just waking them up. And then you can do both together if you want to. So you pull both back at the same time. And that's going to stretch across the chest a little bit more. Pull back and down. And you might feel it almost feels like your little cage is lifting away from your belly as the back muscles start to switch on and straighten you up. And then you can come forward again, so pull the shoulders forward. Open it across. You might want to tuck your chin in slightly for this one. Pull back, so just that little press back through your spine as your shoulders come forward. It's quite nice to give yourself a hug after this one to get the front and back both working. Check your wingspan that you're not going to knock anything over first. Give yourself a hug, wrap your arms around your body, tuck your chin in. Breathe deep into your back and remember we open, we don't fling. So take the arms out, a little squeeze of the shoulder blades together. Breathe nice and deep, expand the chest and then hug in again. So you hug in. You can bend your knees a little bit if you want to, round in the spine, and then straighten up. Tailbone drops down, crown of head reaches up, shoulders squeeze back. Hold back for breath if you can. Curl in, breathe into your back, open out, breathe into your front. Good, and then bring your arms down. So that's the neck. And the shoulder's done a little bit. I want to do a bit more work on the shoulder though. So again, hold the chair if you want to. We're going to do your dumb waiter. So we'll start with one arm. I just happen to have my left arm ready, so I'll start with that one. Try and get your forearm parallel to the floor. Shoulders back and down. And then you're going to take your hand out to the side. And then across your front. And I want you to feel the shoulder rotating back. But it's really coming out of this shoulder rotation. So try and avoid letting your body turn. Squeezing the shoulder back as the arm goes out. It doesn't, might not go very far, it doesn't matter. And when that starts to feel a little bit easier, you can hold that arm out for a little bit longer. Stay there and breathe. And you're squeezing the shoulder blade towards the spine. And then back in. Squeezing the shoulder blade towards the spine, so it's coming in towards your spine. Good. One more on that side, and then we'll flip to the other side. So again, start with your forearm about parallel to the floor, shoulder back and down, and then you take the hand out to the side. Try and make sure the arm stays level, as if you've got a tray sat there, rather than flipping up. 
So out and across your foot. Squeeze in the shoulder blade towards the spine. You're going to have one arm that performs better than the other. So try and keep it as parallel to the floor as you can. Sometimes we can try and do this to flip up and feel like we've gone further. So it's called done waiter. So you imagine you've got a tray sat on your hand. Keep your chest facing forward and hold that stretch if and when it feels a little bit easier for you to do that. Squeeze in the shoulder back, puffing the chest out, hips square. That's it. And if you want to, you can do both together. You might find that is a little bit easier, but if it doesn't feel right, one at a time is fine. So you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. You haven't got to keep turning around, I'm just showing you different angles. You can stay where you are. So I've got a cold seam, I'll turn around to the back. That's it. Couple more, really opening through those shoulders. Okay, then we're going to work the whole shoulder. Now, this is where it's useful to have something to lean on because it will support your body weight. Again, if you don't want to, you don't have to. You're going to take one foot forward and put a bit more of your weight on that leg and hold onto the chair on that side if you want to. Keeping your back straight, you're going to let your arm hang. So this arm feels quite loose in the socket. Try and avoid rounding your back. So nice straight spine, and then you're starting to stir your pot. So it starts off, it's a quite a small paint pot. You stir in the paint, and then the pot gets bigger. Because as you know, with any sort of DIY, it starts off as a small job and it just gets bigger and bigger. So keep stirring around. Keep your chest lifted, and the arm should feel quite loose. This is a very good passive stretch for the shoulder. It just keeps some mobility in the shoulder. This front leg is holding some weight, so your legs are getting stronger while you're here. And then you can reverse your circle, so start with your small paint pot again, just stirring around and bit by bit the job gets bigger, so the paint pot has to get bigger. Keep your chest lifted, keep your back muscles engaged. And then we've got to do the other side. Again, if you're going to use your chair, bring it with you. Weight on that front leg, keep your back straight, let your arm hang. You can always use the wall if it's close enough. And small paint pot to start with, circle around. Keep your chest lifted, so even if you're watching this arm stir the pot, you don't have to round your spine. Remember, you've got a very useful neck and eye swivel thing going on, where you can lower your head, but the spine can stay straight. See, six weeks in, the sarcasm has arrived. So when you've served enough in that direction, work the other way. Push through the floor on this supporting leg, make it work. Stirring around. Loosening up the shoulders. It's quite a nice passive stretch. So if you are struggling with your shoulders, you want to keep that joint mobile, but you don't want to put too much weight through it. It's a good one to do. But we're going to finish with a, a bit more active work in the shoulders if you can. So standing up again, I'm going to do side on so you can see my arm. You start to just let the arm swing. You can have one foot forward again if that feels a little bit more stable or hold on. I'm going to swing it. Just let it swing. Doesn't matter how far it goes, just whatever's right for you. But again, you might find... So we've, paint, we've stirred the paint, now we're painting the wall. Good, isn't it? So, stirred the paint pot, now we're painting the wall. This is where we get a little bit maverick because we're going to paint the wall and go over the top. <laughs> you can't paint the wall and the ceiling at the same time. Around you go. Swing it up and over. Swing it up and over. Then we're going to go the other way. So start to swing it again. One foot forward if you find that easier. And then you're going to come back and over that sort of overarm. You can do a few swings and then do your arm over, or you can go straight into your arm over. Try and keep your hips still, so you're working this torso. Starting to get that moving a bit, it's going to be our next bit as well, so we're getting into the torso. A 
and then we're going to do the other side. So again, I'm going to turn around just so you can see my arm. You don't have to. Hold on. If your back starts to feel achy, you've got to zip these abs tighter or find something to lean on. You've been putting too much weight in the lower back otherwise. So start to just swing the arms. Just swing it. Chest lifted. So even though, again, our primary focus is on the arm, our core muscles are getting stronger because they're stabilising the trunk for us while the arm starts to swing. So we're going up a little bit higher and down. Painting the wall now. Up. I seem to be painting the floor more than the wall, but never mind. It's all going to be the same colour. And then we get maverick and go up and over. If you find your balance is a little bit off there, one foot forward just gives you a bit more space. You might find you get quite warm doing this one because your heart has to work quite hard to push the blood up into the arm to move the arm. So it's making your heart work as well, which is good. As long as it's within your range, if you start to feel breathless, bring the arm down. Then we can reverse it. So start to swing the arm back again, back and forward again. Emphasis on pulling back now because we're going to go back and over. And to finish the arms, we can do both together. So if you bring both arms up together and back. Squeezing the shoulder blades together. Try and keep your head lined up with your shoulders as your arms travel back. Squeeze the bum muscles a little bit for stability. And then forward. So bring the arms up and forward, mind the light fittings. Lovely, one more, and then we're going to get a little bit more into this torso. So we're going to start with our side bends, and again, hold onto, onto something solid if you need to. If you are going to use something to lean on, you're going to just do a few one side, and then a few the other, when you've brought your chair around the other side to you. Otherwise, have your feet wide enough apart, shoulders back and down, slide one hand down your leg, pull up, Slide the other hand down your leg. Now again, I'm going to do it slight side on just because I want you to just check your posture. So as you slide your hand down your leg, keep your chest facing forward. And your shoulders and hips lined up. There's a temptation sometimes to kind of drop forward into the move. So you add a little bit of a twist on. We don't want that. We want to be up nice and straight. And if you have a wall handy, you can use the wall. So it's bashing the head against the clock. So you're trying to keep your shoulders and hips lined up as you slide down. Very good one this for waking up the back muscles. If you are a little bit round shouldered, try standing against the wall and see how close your head and your shoulders are to the wall. So it's a good sort of straightening exercise. If you want to add on to this one, slide your hand down the leg, ground through your feet, reach through the crown of your head and bring your opposite arm up and over. Press down a little bit heavier on the opposite leg. So as I'm going over to the left, my right leg is pushing down a little bit more. Sorry, I'm not mirroring. Back up. Same on the other side. So slide your hand, bring your arm over. Press through the opposite leg, opposite to the direction you're, you're reaching in. Keep your chest facing forward. And come back. So slide and reach. Press through your foot. Square your shoulders up. And you're looking to really feel it stretching out of that hip. You can add on yet more if you want to. So you slide your hand down your leg, bring your opposite arm over and reach out. Turn the bottom hand round and make a beach ball shape. Square your chest up and pull yourself back up. Same on the other side. So you go over. Turn that bottom hand round and pull it up. Imagine having a beach ball over your head. I don't know why you would either. Square your shoulders and your chest to the front of the room so there's no twisting. And then pull yourself up and you want these side muscles doing the pulling. Over. Turn. Bring that arm up. Square your chest to the front and pull. 
One more. Now we'll work. Turn, pull that arm up, square your chest, press through your feet, reach through the crown of your head and lift yourself up. Arms down, waist sides. Hopefully you'll feel those waist muscles working. Good. Then we've got a bit of spine twist to do. So hold on to the chair if you want to. Hips, chest facing forwards, abdominals tight, tailbone down, crown of head up. Hold on to your support if you want with your one hand and turn away from the chair. Come back to centre. Same on the other side. So your hips are facing forwards as your shoulders rotate around. So squeeze the centre, drop the tailbone down. If you want to make the exercise a little bit more challenging, bring your arms up into your box shape. Shoulders back. So the reason it's more challenging is your upper body's got to hold its shape whilst it's being turned. So more stability required. But try and keep your hips facing forward as your shoulders rotate around. So holding onto the sink, draining board, whatever, is quite good because it's, it reminds you that you've got to keep your hips forward. So you'd hold on with one hand and turn your shoulders. So again, it's waking up the muscles in the back. Lifting that ribcage slightly. We don't want to be down here twisting. Nice and straight. You can add a karate chop onto this one if you want to, if you're feeling a little bit like that today. Rotate around, whichever direction you're going in, that arm straightens and pulls back, karate chopping. Come back, same other side. Again, I'm turning around, you don't need to. So you rotate, pull that arm back, squeeze the shoulder blade towards the spine, and come back. And you can just alternate from side to side, karate chopping back, get rid of some frustration. <laughs> Shoulders down. Love it. Then we're going to get onto the hips. So I might feel a little bit tired now, I need to move. I'm going to start with some squats. I'm going to use the chair again. You can just not use the chair if you want to. So you're going to have your feet a comfortable distance away from the chair if you're using it. You're going to keep your chest lifted, move your hips back and down. Sitting and standing. If you're not using the chair, arms out in front and lower down. And you just let your arms reach forward as your bum goes back. So remember this public toilets. So there you are classy joint, public toilet, you don't want to sit and the door's got no lock. So you've got to push the door shut as you hover. <laughs> and pull up. See, that's one good thing at the moment. You really have to use your own toilet, don't you? Sitting back and down. And find the positives. Now, squats are excellent for mobilising the lower back, hips and knees, but also building strength in the hips and the legs. So bone strength. Holding on if you need to. Try and avoid letting your chest drop. I know it's tempting because you feel like you've done a really deep squat, but there's nothing coming out of the legs. So you're sitting down with your chest lifted. Think about your chin on, on your shelf. And we can add on our little back bend. Come and stand a bit closer. So you sit into your squat. You stand up, you squeeze your bum and move your shoulders back. So sit. Hold on, if you've not done this move before, you haven't done it for a while, hold on to something because you don't want to fall backwards, but otherwise, if you don't need to hold on, sit down. As you stand up, squeeze the bone muscles and lengthen through the spine. Little back bend. Your back bend is as deep as your back bend is. If you've got your head on the floor in your back bend, well, well done. As long as you can get up again. And the same with your squat, it's only as deep as you want it to be. Try not to push the knees forward over the toes because that puts the pressure in the ankle. We want to be working the bum. And again, you're going to have got warm because these are big muscles. Okay. 
and then we're going to do our nice uh, lower back stretch. It is useful to hold on to something for this one because you can get a deeper stretch. You can use the chair or you can use the wall, I'll show you both. Take your feet back slightly, support your upper body weight on the chair or the wall, push your hips back and up, keeping a nice straight back. I'm not going to use this wall because you will get a proper Bridget Jones view of my backside and we don't want that, especially if you're about to have your lunch. And pull yourself back up. So we're going to stretch. So this is using the chair, put some weight on it. If that doesn't feel sturdy enough, use the wall. I'm using a door, which you won't do because somebody might walk through it, use your wall. So you push your hips back, push against the wall, and then walk to it to relieve the stretch. Pull your belly in, it's a really nice stretch for the lower back, glutes and hamstrings. And you're supporting your weight while you do it. So it's kind of like a, when we go to three quarter plank and child's pose, it's those stretches. Tighten your belly and push your hips back and up. One more. Okay, so you can repeat those a few more if you want to. Then I'm going to get you to do a few uh, lunges just to build up the strength in the legs. Again, use the chair if you're not sure about lunges. Use some support. Always, if you are using for something to lean on, the leg closest to the lean stays still. That's your stability. So you step with the other leg. You step forward and you push back. Step forward, push back. Now, if you're using some support, you do a few on this side and then you change sides. So you move your chair around. For those not using the chair, you can alternate legs. So you take a step forward, bend both knees, keep your chest lifted and push back. Same on the other leg, so you step forward, quite a big step, so you're balanced on the ball of your other foot, knee and toes face forward, bend both knees and push back. So it's that push back that really builds up strength in the leg. Use the furniture if you're not sure. Until you've got, if, you, if your lunges aren't very stable, then the furniture will actually make it more, and a more effective exercise. Push back. If you're liking these lunges and these squats, come and join us in the circuit class. We do two a week, half an hour. Chris does the mad jumping around stuff. I do the low impact like this. So we gather lunges in every week. You can come and do a few. Keep your back lifted, keep your back straight. You can do a few. You can join in some of the exercises, laugh at the others. <laughs> we do it every, two, every Monday and every Thursday, but it's all recorded. Good. Okay, one more each side, chest lifted. Bring the chair back because we don't see it. Then we're going to do a little bit of work on the lower legs. So again, for a chair if you want to, feet wide up apart, shoulders back, abdominals tight, and you're going to rock forward and back. Now, entirely up to you whether you lift the heels and toes or whether you just roll through the front and back of your feet. Whatever feels stabilising for you. But the rolling back onto the heels is quite tough, so try and avoid just sticking your bum out instead. You want to feel, you might have to step back, you might need to hold on, Sharon. Up and down, but we want to feel, ah, struggling today, we want to feel the front and back leg muscles working. Of course works well in rehearsal. <laughs> Just finding your strength. And then we're going to start to stretch the toes because you know I'm big on toes. So you're going to come up and push down through the ball of your foot. Try and keep your heels pulling up towards the back of your knee. And then down. So you're stretching the toes. You can roll back a bit and then up. Stretching the toes, working your calf muscles. Back down. So we've got a balance element going on now. Lifting those heels, really feel your calf muscles working, stretching your toes.
And you're going to do a little bit of side to side. So again, support if you need it. Feet wide enough apart that you're going to put your weight on one leg and then the other leg. But this torso stays lifted, you're not dropping. You're going from one leg to the other leg. Now you can really freak your neighbours out. If you've got a neighbour watching you, you stand in the window and just rock, keeping your face completely straight. <laughs> play, with, play with their mind a little bit. If you want to, put your weight on one leg, reach through the crown of your head, squeeze your bum and lift the other foot off the floor. Work in the abductors. And then, same on the side, straighten your back, lift your foot. Try not to drop into your side. Lifting through the crown of your head. One more. And back. Okay, and we're going to finish with trying to stand on one leg. Bear in mind you're in your own house. I can't see you and I can't come and pick you up. So work within your level. So be sensible. Start with your feet together. Find something to lean on if you want to. Start with your feet as close as is comfortable for your knees and hips, shoulders back and down. If you feel comfortable to do so, close your eyes. Try and reach up through your head, drop your tailbone down and tighten your belly. Check your feet aren't clawing to try and hold on, spread your toes out. Be aware of your rib cage. it's quite relaxing, just be aware of your body. You might start to feel a little bit dizzy, so just open your eyes if you do. Put your chin on your shelf, wind your neck back a little bit if needs to, lift your heart and breathe. And then open your eyes, spread your feet a little bit wider. I'm going to try standing on one leg. Remember, if you're going to use support, the leg closest to you stays down. It's the leg opp opposite leg that lifts. Otherwise, it's not much support. Put your weight on whichever leg you're going to stay down on the floor. Tighten your waist, pull your belly in, come up onto the ball of the foot on the lifting leg, and then lift it as high as is right for you. Try not to drop into yourself, so we want a nice straight spine, holding on for your support if you want to, and spread your toes on the supporting leg. Reach your head for the ceiling if you want to. You can close your eyes. I'm not going to do it because I will wobble. And if you're watching, it'll make you wobble too. But if you want to, try closing your eyes, reaching your head for the ceiling. Breathe. I'm not hearing any crashing noises, so that's good. And then same on the other leg. So if you're using a chair, around, that leg stays down. Weight on the supporting leg. Come up onto the ball of the foot on the non-supporting leg. And when you're ready, lift it only as high as is right for you. Try to lift out the spine. And if you want to, you can close your eyes. Whichever leg you've got lifted, try and drop that hip slightly if it's trying to lift itself up. Square your shoulders and lift through the crown of your head. Breathe. If I had one or two crashes this side, never mind. Put your feet down. Few and a nice few monkey swings to finish. So let your arms come forward, sit back, reach forward, just stretching out. If you want to take that into a back bend, you can. You come up and lean back, just letting your body move a little bit now to finish. Yeah, pushing through your feet to come up. So that's just over half an hour of standing work, which is going to make your hips a little bit stronger and your legs a little bit stronger, and something to do if you can't be bothered to get the mat out. Right, thank you very much.